right out front, pivot cast, the placement and orientation on our mid frame. Again, our mid frame is turned over, so we're working on the bottom of our mid frame. Now our front pivot caster, guys, it's going to be located 300 millimeters from the very front of your mid frame. 300 millimeters in, get a mark in there at the 300 millimeter mark. Now you need to find the halfway mark of your 65 millimeters, guys, which is 32 millimeters, 0.5, 32.5 to get your 65 mil. Now, I used my magnifying glasses here as recommended for old people. <laughs> and what you want to do, it can be hard to measure, especially guys, once we've got our trolley rail on, okay? So what I generally tend to do, uh, because rolled box can be quite hard to measure. It's easy to measure on the side, okay? But where it's rolled, it's hard to know where the edge is. So I use a combination of my magnifying glass because I'm old. If you're a young person building this, you shouldn't have any dramas. Work off your 65 millimeter mark, okay? Look straight down where you're measuring and get your 65 mil mark measured right on the edge where the rolled becomes straight, all right? You can still see it with the trolley rail system on and then mark in your 32.5 millimeter and do that in a couple of locations along. So then when you, can, when you put your ruler on, you can put it on those marks and get a nice straight line exactly where you need it because we have to line that, we have to line the middle of our mid frame up with the center of our caster here, okay? Well, our caster frame minus its wheel. Now, this is a zinc dipped caster, so not it's a little bit like gal, okay? Not the best thing to weld, but can't get them any other way. So I get my uh, flap disc and I um, take off any of the zinc along the front and I put a slight bevel on the top edge and the back edge. Yes, this is going to be welded straight on to the mid frame. I contemplated putting this on a plate so it can be taken off, but this is a 300 kilogram rated caster with a grease nipple. It's got really large bearings, super thick uh, materials used, okay? It's got a really heavy duty top cup that the stud is actually a bolt with a nut. This is never gonna fail, guys. I'm very confident it won't fail. And even if it does, I can take my mid frame apart. I can take my whole motion sim apart. That's the way it's built. So then you can move it around. That's one great thing about this. Um, and if ever needed be, I'd just get my angle grinder and cut this off. It'd take me approximately 30 seconds to cut this off and replace it. If I put it on a plate and allow a bolting system, it's just gonna make this another five millimeters higher and my tolerances are already pretty close on uh, my traction loss axle casters, even with the adjustments that are gonna be able to be made. So this is going straight on the mid frame. So this caster, as mentioned, well, I'll give you the dimensions of the plate. It's a six mil thick plate, guys, and it's a six mil thick caster frame for the wheel. So this is how heavy duty it is. And this is what's needed uh, with this, because this does have to put up with uh, quite a bit of side load. When the motion team goes through its roll axis, this does have to tolerate side load. And generally, casters are not rated so much for side load. They're more rated just for a direct force on top of them. This is 300 kilograms rated, but that actually goes off the wheels. Because what I noticed is, this is exactly the same caster as my 225 kilogram rated caster on the old three degree of freedom motion sim. Exactly the same caster, it's just a longer frame take a larger 150 millimeter wheel. Everything else is the same. So those loads that they're rated at are obviously rated for the wheels, not the frame. Being six mil, being large bearings, both in the top cup and the bottom cup, who knows? This is probably to tolerate six or 700 kilograms, right? So, and this is actually quite a rigid caster as far as end play goes. It's very tight. So if we keep this uh, greased on, you know, regular intervals, sort of, you know, probably bi-monthly, probably not even that. It would depend on how many hours you're putting on the sim. I'd probably lubricate this once a month, okay? We should never have to replace this unless there's something disastrous that happens. Okay, <clears throat> so this is what we've got to set up, all right? So I think I got sidetracked there, guys. The dimensions for the bottom plate of this, or the top plate, I should say, for this caster is 110 millimeters in width, 
Right, so it's 110 mil wide. And this is 135 millimeters in length. That gives you an idea of what you're going to try and track down, all right? So what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to remove that zinc, both sides, and do it first before you mark it or you lose your mark, funny enough. I'm going to set this up right on our 300 millimeter mark. You see I've already cleaned my bottom plate ready to weld. So what we're going to do is we'll get the halfway mark now of the caster in its uh, width. That's all you're after. 110 divided by 2, funnily enough, is 55 millimetres. Now we need to do this right on the El Fronto. Kevin, you need to do it on the El Fronto. The doctor being... Stupid again. My apologies to any uh, Spanish people and stuff like that that the doctor is trying to imitate and doing a really bad job of it. Okay. There's our front mark. Let's get one on the back. So we can make sure this goes on straight. Even though technically, obviously this <laughs> this is a you know, swivel caster. So this could be crooked, to be honest. Right, because okay, as long as it's you know square, that could be crooked. But guys, that's going to look like a blind person put that together. Not that there's anything wrong with being blind. I have to say that too in this new uh, woke society. I tell you what happened today, guys. I woke up. All right. So uh, what are we going to need? Fifty-five millimeters. All right. Halfway point at both. Halves, and now what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to extend this by 135 millimeters because um, we need to have our center line on our mid frame go past our caster, so then we can line the back uh, mark up with the front. So we're going to put another couple of marks in here, uh, 32.5. I'm going to I'm going to employ the magnifying glass here. I'm looking down, looking down. Looking down. Beautiful. 32. And one more. Just here. So I can make sure this is straight. Oh, here. I've got to go find a spot where I haven't welded. And that in itself is a challenge. Okay, beautiful. 31, 32.5. Get our ruler on those two marks. Remembering that the Sharpie, even though this is a fine Sharpie, you've got to compensate for the thickness of your Sharpie as well, okay? Rightio. Ha ha ha! Right, so the other thing too I'll say uh, without being too stupid, you can get these head torches as well, right? Now this is brilliant with a magnifying glass setup, particularly for doing this if you need it. I've got good light in this workshop, so I don't need that head torch. I use that mainly for working on my car when I'm crawling under my car and I need hands free to be, um, you know, a, the monkey wrench boy. Um, I, I wear that. I wear that. As, as well as a shop light. I've got a shop light that goes under the car as well. But that is a great setup, guys, for when we come to putting all of our electronics together. When we come to putting all of our... <laughs> when we come to uh, go putting all of our electronics together, uh, a combination of those magnifying uh, glasses, if you're an old fart, like the Quack, and a head torch, it's brilliant, okay? Like I said before, you'll, you'll think you're 20 years old again. Okay, we've got these marks now lined up. We've got our uh, caster uh, shaved off. We've taken the, the zinc layer off those areas and we're ready to weld and we're going to do a good, strong, full weld across these, all right? Because our caster uh, is carrying our mid frame, which is carrying our top frame. So we need to make sure this is on nice and strong. So you'll line the center of your caster up at the front 
with the center of your mid frame and you'll do the same with your center mark on your caster at the back with the line you've just drawn in and extended to the center of your mid frame. I'll tell you. Now, there's a bit of a trick to this, peeps, all right, because what we have here with this caster, we have these nylon bushings, all right? Now, these nylon bushings are really important because they do two things. They keep in our grease and they keep out the dust and, and, and muck. These are going to get extremely soft uh, when we weld this. They'll contort and they can risk actually popping out of their uh, inserts inside when they get really hot. So it's really important that we do not fiddle with this at all once we start our welding, all right? If you start fiddling with this, when this is like super hot, these will all move out of alignment. They'll end up coming out and they'll be absolutely useless to you. And then we will have the risk of our bearings failing earlier than uh, they should, all right? You also need to be mindful of your grease nipple here, right? So move that out of the way. Move it to the side, okay? When we're going to weld, if you want, um, you could put like a little tire cap, you know, tube cap or something on this. I may have something like that right here. In fact, here's something I prepared earlier. You could get just like a, a tire cap. Push over that. Yeah, it's going to get, the tire cap's going to get a bit hot, but mate, it's going to protect that grease nipple from anything splattering and getting stuck on it. And believe me, if you don't do this, I guarantee a piece of weld slag will end up right on that ball, pushing ball, and then, you know, because that's the sort of shit that happens to the quack all the time. So put something on that to protect that, and uh, it's going to save you coming up with new curse words. Right, once you've got that lined up, as we've got here, we can do a tack in each corner. We'll do a diagonal tack, 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 all right? Then we'll do full welds in here, all right? Getting some good penetration. Again, we've got a mismatch of metal thicknesses here. Six mil on this caster plate versus two and a half mil on our mid frame. So we're going to concentrate the majority of the heat and the weld pool on the thick piece of metal and let it push in to our mid frame. Don't concentrate it on the mid frame, trying to get it into the thick metal. All right, to get the penetration into the thick metal, it'll be on two and a half too long and you'll risk blowing into your mid frame. So keep the heat concentrated on the mid frame. Oh, oh, what am I saying? I'll get my gun here, guys, to try and give you a demo, all right? So try and keep your heat concentrated on the thick piece of uh, on the plate, on the caster, and push your pull down into the mid frame. With a weave coming back on itself, like this. You get your gloves, you'll have your nice lined mid gloves to keep your hands nice and cool while you do this so you can get good control on your gun here. And this is what you'll do, all right? Blah, 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 blah. But it's going to look great and it's going to be effective and keep your caster where it needs to be. Now, that allows us plenty of uh, front trolley carriage movement for our surge axis, more than what we're going to use. I'm envisaging we'll only use between 25 and 35 millimetres of actual travel, but I don't know. It might not feel realistic enough with only that amount of travel. We might need a bit more to make it feel more like a real G-force. So I've allowed for that, okay? It's going to be more than that. It's going to be around around 70 millimetres of travel altogether because when the, um, when the trolley carriage comes across, it can actually go all the way into here. So you, you can pick up that little bit there as well. Anyway, it's all in the way it's put together, guys. I'll just keep you tantalised and wanting and deep desires, okay, for the surge. Right, let's get this welded on. Got my air running, guys, again, of course, and as mentioned earlier, make sure you've got nothing in the vicinity of where you're welding that could possibly end up with weld splatter on it, like your rulers and your squares, etc. Make sure you move them or anything. Make sure there's no combustible items near where you're welding, aerosol cans, paint cans, fuel, uh, shop rags, 
anything like that, make sure they're well and truly clear of where you're welding so you don't start a fire. Before you start to weld, guys, double check your alignment. today's ep. I hope you're going well with your build. Keep powering on guys. Any help you require, don't be afraid to leave a comment and ask for help if you need it. So until our next tutorial, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, take it easy out there.